and we now should be live on the live stream good evening everyone hope everything is good for you as it is for me let me just put the old uh, chat on so i can see what people are saying to me and uh we've got two in the chat already we've got will the snack hello will how are you hope you are well um tonight a uh, bit of a recap on some of the builds that i'm doing um i'm going to do a little bit of work on a canopy and uh, we're going to look at a kit that i've actually dragged out of the stash that i started about four or five months ago that i needed to get really near to the end of it um uh, so a frog kit um i've done three videos today i'm um, basically going to be putting them out hopefully over the next three or four days of kit reviews from vintage kit so that's to look forward to and really i really have nothing else apart from just going through the kits that i'm you know just go through the kits and do a little bit more work on the frog and the canopy for the um hellcat that i'm doing the matchbox kit so hope you're well um will this next week saying in the chat i'm good really well good for you sir and uh if you'd like these videos remember put your questions comments in the chat or if you like leave a comment in the comments bar um after the videos uh, or the live stream is finished and um I will always respond to those questions and comments. Right, so as you know, I have been building an egg plane, um, an FA-18 Hornet, and yesterday the perfect plastic putty arrived, so I was able to do the um, the bits on the front here, which had a bit of a gap, so I filled it in with plastic, perfect plastic putty, sanded it down, wetted it, everything else, and this is almost ready now for the gloss to go on. The figure has had its um, um, silver uh, bodysuit put on. So I've painted, that's our two coats of acrylic silver around. So I want it to look silver. And then I'm going to do the helmet white, the uh, face guard black. And then I'm going to um, do something with this bit here in the middle. That's, that's the plan of that one. Black will also be on the mask that it's wearing. So that will be good. Um, so we're almost up with this one. This one's getting there. So it's a couple of coats. I want to do chrome on the back here where the jet comes out. I'm going to do that almost like a inside a black and a red. Hopefully that's the plan on that one. Just put a gloss coat on it. Put the decals on and then do the undercarriage underneath. And then this will be finished. So that's almost there. Um, hi Viaduct Central Model Railway. Nice to see you, to see you nice. Um, I put, because I was doing the, the figure here, I wanted to do like a chromy silver for the engine. And I, I've painted that now for the, um, the Hellcat. And what I was going to do was get the panel line um, black from Tamiya. I'm just going to dip some bits in there. Firstly, what I do need um, is... Is that the one? Yeah. Always good to have sticky, sticky, uh, sticky notes around your desk. I just want to just put a little bit of panel line in here, just to um, kind of give the the engine a little bit of a um, break up the look slightly. Just going to go around it, just gently into all the gaps there, you know, into the grooves. A little bit more of that. There we go. Just to give it a little bit, of you know, a little bit of variation in the engine, and it will make the um, the lines pop. If you know what I mean. And I think that's about it on that one. So that's basically made that pop. Makes it very much more three D ish like, doesn't it? If I just do around there a little bit. In there, that's it. That looks pretty good quite simple you know just be very careful with this stuff because as i've been told it is carcinogenic so i'm a little bit worried about using it now in the chat we've got island at rc duke good evening to you sir and we've got mr ravenscroft in good evening to you as well so we've got six watching now so if the other two are watching if you want to leave a comment hi dylan is uh 
in the chat as well. Hi, Dylan. Hope you're well. Portsmouth fan, isn't that right, Dylan? <laughs> yes. How we how we laugh at the uh, at the Portsmouth at the Pompey. Definitely got Pompey last season by them, I tell you. <laughs> so there you go. That is um, basically all done and dusted now. Um, well, I'll just leave that to dry, and then I will affix that to this at the front. Glue that all in. And then we'll be ready then for giving it its first coat, which will be a primer. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking at the moment. You know, a little bit of cleanup needed here. Um, you know, there's no, there's going to be no putty involved in this one. This is just basic build. Um, it's a vintage one. I try to when I do vintage kits, I try to use brush paint and I try to leave it as um, as if it was made in the 1970s without all the modern sort of bits that we have I, I suppose I could put some super glue and mix it with talcum powder and put it in but no I just thought we'd do it this way and uh, see how we get on I will have to put a little bit this is actually sagged a little bit as you can see so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work on the back there before but this has all been nicely um, uh, rubbed down nice finish on there and hopefully that'll be done so that is a uh, work in progress and uh, hopefully um, we'll get some more paint on it. The paint is on its way. I've got a tracking number come through this morning. So obviously they said they were going to send it yesterday. They didn't because I got the tracking number late last night. So, But it should be due either tomorrow or at, at worst it will be here on Friday. So I can start painting that one up. Um, for the canopy, I thought I'd just show you some things that I do when I'm doing canopies. Now... Doing masks on canopies is, is it can be a tricky thing. Um, so I thought tonight I'll show you how I do a, um, a canopy. So obviously what I do is is I use masking tape. Um, I don't use masko um, when I'm doing this. This I don't I, I don't really find it necessary to use masko. So what I do is I cut a piece of um, tamia off. I then uh, use a knife and. Uh, what I do is, is I just cut and trim up the end so you look nice for that sort of size. Pick it up. So I've got a piece in my hand. I hope that's big enough. Then what I do is, is I place it on the glass like so. So it's pretty much covering the whole area that I need, need the mask up. And then what I do is I get myself... cocktail stick and then I get the cocktail stick and because it's quite sharp I go into the edges and I push it right in and I follow the line using the cocktail stick and it goes nice and you know really get it in there go over it two or three times rub it down make sure that it's gone right in Right in the right in the crack, <laughs> right in the bend of the of the canopy. So it goes there like so. So pretty much you can see. I don't think you see in the camera. I'm sorry that this camera is not very good at um, um, zooming in and out. It's it, it, I need what I need to do is actually get my iPhone here because the iPhone is such a quick zoom in. It's very clever. But um, I'll get that sorted in the next couple of weeks. But um, if you can see what I can see now, it's basically all now put in into the hole. Um, and I've pushed it in with a um, cocktail stick. And let me just move this. I'm all fiddly with the thumbs here at the minute. Then what I do is, is I, I slightly, I, I grab the um, scalpel, use a fresh blade. That's the secret, just using a fresh blade. And then I keep my finger on the blade itself for control. You know, I've always said that when I hold a, when I hold a scalpel blade, I normally hold it like this because wherever the finger points to is where it goes. But in this instance, I extend my middle finger so I, and then I pinch it between my finger and my thumb to give it a bit more stability. You may even find it easier, but it's very dangerous to do this, is to actually just get rid of the, get rid of the handle and use the blade on its own. But this is how I do it anyway. So it's nice and tight. And I look in the light and I cut... I get up close and I cut where where the groove is, so it cuts through up to the very end. Make sure I don't go over like so. Back over this way towards myself. Push it right up to the gap and pull back like that. 
again cross across this time make sure I'm pushing it right in oh and that's what happens sometimes unfortunate just to give it a twist put it back down the thing about this is if it goes wrong you can always remove the tape and start again and there's the four edges done and then all you do then is is get a pair of tweezers grab onto the end and hopefully if you cut it well it will peel off like so and oh there's a little bit of a catch there that's all right we can pull that and to be fair i don't think you're going to get a better job than that it's a tiny bit of a tag there well i just missed the thing i'll just get the knife there and just gently trim that piece off by just pushing in the gap Be very careful there you go and I don't think you're going to get a better job than that. That's the one I first did. I just wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing again. <laughs> but you can see, that's the, they're easy when they're flat like this. Okay, so When you get around to these bits here, it's going to be a bit more trickier. But we can have a look. Um, in the chat, we've got Monkey Puzzle View. Hi, Moz. Don't count on the post. <laughs> we, we, we've both got experience there. I'm actually going to change this blade because I'm not happy with this blade, really. Um... What I might do is, actually I've got another knife here that I think has got a fresh blade on. Has that got the fresh blade on? Yeah, that's a fresh blade. Yeah, I knew there was one with a fresh blade. I picked up the wrong one. So, again, straight into the, uh, cut the, cut the masking tape. Pick it up gently so you don't rip it. Like so. History and scale, good evening, how are you sir? So we're basically there. And then we, we put over the top, like so. It's best to go over both edges. So you've got that piece there. Again, use the cocktail stick and just feel your way around. One, two there. You've got a very, very, there's a very slight one there actually. It's quite slight. So just push that one there, push him in there. Push him in there. I think this one here is going to be a, a slight problem. So you have to be very careful with this one here because the ridge isn't that much. So we'll go in there. We'll just push it. Find the corner there. Find the corner there. Push it left and right. And around. Like so. Again, picking up the knife. Using the finger. Get right into the corner, get right into the corner, find the line and pull back. Oh, this is a sharper blade, this one. Pull back, then go down. Let me put my finger in there. It's better to give it a bit more control. Pull down, hold that right against, try and keep it against. I see it's pulled it there a little bit, doesn't matter. Then go this side, get into the gear groove, get right in there. Pull back and then this one here is going to be a bit of a tricky one because you've got to find the line and I think I've caught the line there pull them off carefully he's not quite done there unfortunate so I'm going to find the line again this is quite a tricky one this because it's not much of a if I go there about there I reckon back and see what happens now this little bit so very fiddly if you do it right it looks good go again he's off now put him off here gently pull making these oh look at that what a swine oh. right that's all right. We've got the we've got the size. It's just pulled out slightly. So we lift him up gently with the knife. Tweezer time. Get all nervous when I do it on camera. <laughs> Mark scale models. Good evening to you, sir. Hope you're well. Pull that up. There we go. 
find the edge. So hopefully that will go terrible. A bit high that one in it. Might go down from the bottom up. But with canopies, it is the most fiddliest job. It's doing this. Start the other way. Go down in there. Pull the line up. I think that's almost there. I am. There you go. I'm pretty happy with that. Push him down. Into that groove there. There you go. Perfect. So it is the most fiddliest of jobs doing this. There's no easy way of doing canopies, I don't think. People use Masco, people um, people use all sorts to get the perfect finish. I've seen, you know, and some, you know, the other way of doing it is just to paint the whole lot and um, and um, scraping it with a, when, once it's all been done, just going around scraping off the paint with a sharpened um, bit of sprue or a sharpened um, cocktail stick. So, um, history and scale, I've always hated masking. I've resorted to buying Edouard masks for my B17. Cool. There's a lot of glass on that B17 as well, isn't there? You'd be there for hours doing that if you had to do it. But it's, you know, it, for what it is, it's not cheap either, is it? The old, uh, the old um, Ed Edard masks. Right, so let's just push that one down there, give him a clean, lift him up, and then I want to do that side one there, so if I go at the angle of the, if I do that, should be enough there. And push him on. There to there. Let's just try and uh, push him into the, the gap, the into the groove. See, there's no actual. I don't think there's a line there. That's the problem. There's not an actual line, you've just got to guess. You've just got to play with it and guess. If I just go along that line there. And that goes around the edge. It's a curved edge as well, I see. Oh, doorbell's ringing. And let's go around the edge here again. And lift up a little piece there. See, very, very delicate. I'll just push it off. And what you do is then just trim this edge up here. If I can find the groove, I can't quite see the groove here, but I think it's there. Down he goes. Cool. I think I've got him. But yeah, no, I haven't. Cut him there. Down the groove. Right, so, and there's the other bit. So that's the way I would do um, a canopy. Um, lucky I found. Oh, here we go. Uh, history. Goes, lucky I found some in the clearance for six pound on e models. Yeah, if you can pick them up on eBay cheap from somebody who's got like a job lot, grab them. You know they're always worth having, and they always keep their money. So yeah, if you can hear my missus outside, I do apologise. She's talking to somebody. She's dropped something off. <laughs> we're live and uh, we're proud. Right, let's just get with this bit. So yeah, that's just a bit, just showing you how I do this. I will crack on and do this one proper, but I just want to spend my time just showing you what I've been up to. Um, you know, so hopefully that will go in. So you don't have to do it all because see a lot. That bit here gets hidden underneath. That goes in there like so, and then gets screwed in. So then you can just put the canopy. You know, then glue him in if best you can. 
um, it needs a bit of a tidy because it doesn't quite fit so it needs a little bit of a rub down here and then paint it and then when I painted it I'm gonna actually put the I'm gonna actually dip it in the gloss clear to get give, give it that glass look so um, right so that's that one done um, that's done catch the knife and this is the kit that I started about oh, four or five months ago and um, I've, I started doing it it's a frog kit um, it's the Spitfire Mark 8 9 fighter bomber um, I started doing it because it was just something I I had in my in my stash sort of thing and I um, and uh, the decals are a bit tetchy um, but I will give I'm going to try those decals out but I have got these and these all separate if I need to I'm not doing the sharp teeth because I can't stand sharp teeth on a, on a Spitfire you know I'd rather have you know just the basic the basic um I've cut myself there look at that cut myself just nip myself with a Stanley blade with a scalpel blade um all the, all the bits are there still I've uh, I've worked on most of it so far it's all pretty much together apart from um I've put the the wheels on cuz they just clip on you see can you see that they move um but I, I will be fixing them quite proper cord it as well um canopy again very basic canopy comes with a stand um comes with the four forearm prop and uh for some reason i've got one of these extra i don't know why that is so yeah that's the plan and this is the spitfire at the moment it's had two coats um you know what happened to the last vintage decals yeah i know <laughs> i've got some i've spoke to um if you want to see a really good video on putting decals on you want to look at baggies tmd after i did my video he put one out and it is very very good very very well done it's worth watching um it's like a paper cut isn't it look at that it just caught me as i caught the knife just shows you how deadly these uh, scalpels are well not deadly they're life-saving really that's what scalpels are they're life-saving if they're used by the right people so i got this far with the spitfire i've given it a couple of coats today and i'm using a mat 78 on it um i'm not worried too much on being absolutely accurate with colors on this one it's just i wanted to build a frog kit um and a genuine frog kit not a nova rebox one um so i thought i'd start this one up and uh, give it a good paint um let's see it's it, it, three or four coats will be needed for this um I, I always I've got the acrylic here it's good stuff um so you know Humber acrylic um oh, it smells good as well um look at that Humber it doesn't fit your tray um so basically it's a case of mixing up the paint adding you know I think it's five to one so five parts paint just add one part thinners and I just give it a paint and what I tend to do is, I don't know if you notice, is that I tend to do this section first, then underneath, and then do the tail bit last. That's what I generally do. Let's see, I'm not into, I'm just giving it one colour. So it's going to have the um, the 78 on it. It's going to have a brown put on it as well. Then um, covered up with um, decals. Gearing on, and then this one's finished. So... But I've done this idea. I forgot I had it to be honest. I think if I'm right, I did um, a review on it, an unboxing of the kit. Then I went to build it, and then um, I never quite got round to. I think it's one of the actually. To be fair, I think this is one of the first ones that I used or tried to film as a build right from the start. Um, but um, it never quite never happened. <laughs> it never happened. So. Let's get the brush all nicely covered with thin uh, acrylic thinners. You can use water. Um, you can use Tamiya X20A. Um, you can use Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, but I recommend that you use the le Leveling Thinner when you airbrush. Um, as I said, you can use Tamiya X20 for. Um, 
for mixing and thinning out the paint. The acrylic's quite a good acrylic actually. I I I think people diss Humbrol too too easily because they're they're all airbrushes and they don't really understand um really how you know how you know it has it has improved. There has been some shit shit ones, and I think Humbrol know that. But they've gone back. I think they've gone back to a different supplier now, a different manufacturer for their paint. Um, but yeah, oh, we've got eight people watching. Good evening to everyone that's watching. And uh, so I went across this way, so I'm going to go against the grain this time and just go down and cover it. So it's, it's a really, really rough sort of paint job because it was just as more coats you do the better and it gives it good coverage it'll help level out as well I think brush painting is better when you got raised panel lines, then then um, then if you didn't, if you know what I mean, I can as I said, most of the vintage kits I brush paint, I um, you know have raised panel lines. I wish that they had um, put the exhaust separate. They're, they're actually moulded into the into the frame on this one. Let's move them back a little bit. Let's start this way. Bit of brush painting, then in underneath. Um, so I went side to side that time, so I need to go down this way. So I'm getting quite rough. You know, it's it's not a we would like with this sort of with sort of um, model. I, I, I'm not worried about everything because the idea is that after you've given it all the coats it needs, you then go over the bits where you've missed or tidy up the bits at the end. So what I tend to do is tidy up the ends. So... Run there. On the edge. I see it takes a cut, it looks terrible, but it gets better, I promise you. Because what I do is I thicken the paint up a little bit more, so it's quite a thin coat, and we'll leave that to to dry. And uh, I'll put that on my stand there. So I'll go uh, on there. Perfect. And that will be left to dry. Paint back on. Perfect. Baby wipe needed. Another baby wipe. In it goes. Clean that up. So we can use the tray again. Um, do you prefer landing gear up or that landing gear down or up? If there's a choice, I prefer them down. Um, 
And there's a reason for that, because if they're down, you don't have to do the pilot. If the wheels are up, you have to paint the pilot, don't you? <laughs> you don't have a plane in the air, do you, without a pilot? So I tend to do it. I prefer to do them down. Um, and also, because they don't come with stands anymore. I we had, I saw the uh, quick kits um, Owen put on his that he did a vintage um, Hurricane, and it came with a kit. Uh, it came with, um, with the, um, what's it called? The, um, the stand. Like this one. I these were brilliant. I think these were called um sky hooks. What were they called again? It was um oh sky base. That's the there, so you can either have it taken off in flight, diving or banking. And it's a clever little kit. You just you um you got this piece here which actually fits underneath um in the plane. And then that road, that fits on here, like so. And then there you go. And then this one fits in the stand. I think it's that way, isn't it? It was that way, isn't it? Was it the other way? I can't which way the stand goes in now. Um, so that's back. And up, so that's it goes like that way. So it is that way, yeah. Sorry, I get it right. And it goes in there, and then you can position you so you can have it down and have it so that the plane is you know flying, or you can turn this around and put it back so you can have the plane taken off, or you can actually hang it on your wall and um, you twist it. Um, does it, does it go in that way? I can't remember which way it goes, but yeah, it's a really clever system where you can basically put your, your plane any which way you want. I think you turn it around, don't you? Yeah, you turn this around then. If you want it upright, you push that in there, push him in. There you go. That's better. And then you can have your plane like that, take it so it's actually hanging on the wall. It's a very, very good, good idea, but they nobody does them anymore. Nobody does stand you have to it's like an added extra um to to the mix like you know it's like an added extra i have caught myself in you know it's proper stinging that anyway where's my brush so in the brush where's that one too um where's me my dropper my dropper push that in there clean off the brush Ready for next time. Good. It's me. Baby wipe it. Give it a touch and squeeze. And that is the job of the good one. That's that paintbrush done. Baby wipe, soak up the excess in the bin. And then just wipe out the tray. And we're done. Cool. Excellent. Jobs are good in. I'm hoping that will dry a bit quicker. So today, um, I've got to say to you, I have done the reviews. I've done some filming today. Um, so keep your eye out for the reviews coming out. Um, this one here. I did this one today. Straight from my stash, the Heinkel 3, um, I've done the review on it today, um, it will as I say, it'll go live probably, I've got the editing to do so, Take, I've done three in a row so it takes me about an hour and a half per video that I edit, um, so yeah I've got these out because I just thought they were quite nice, it's only a 1 to 72 scale, um, but just how basic um, decals were back in the day a little bit too basic i suppose but you know that's all you really needed there's none of all this like warning don't put your hand here or anything was it you know um so yeah, i've done the i've done the um the unboxing of this and it is you know this is the genuine article they they kept this one going until 2015 so from 1963 till 20 2015 this was the kit i think the last time they released it was 2008 but it's all in the video 
um, you know, it was used for 50 odd years and then they brought out a new one in 2015. And then, then you know, they've got the Motorhead. Have you seen the Motorhead um, model kit that they've done with all the Motorhead decals and everything? Um, they brought that out with the, the new the new tooling, etc. So, yeah. But it was just like things like this, like the instructions. You know, when you when you look into the instructions, basically you get an exploded view. There's all your bits, all your numbers. And then you, you read the instructions down. You're like locating cement, one of each type of cabin window in a place in port fuselage half ensuring that the rear window has a slot in its center note that the port and starboard windows are not interchangeable apply cement only to the window surrounding projecting within the fuselage it's a lot to take in that's just part one you know and um it is i said it's you know you've really got to look so you've got number one number two number three so you're using parts one two and three You've really got to be on, you'd be at your wits' end, you know, really can really, you know, grasp what you're building with these old kits. Um, obviously, you can buy, um, you could buy the, a later kit, say a 20, you know, 1999 kit, and they'll have better instructions in. But it was just nice seeing that, and, and that, uh, that old logo, you know, on the box isn't there. Do you see what I mean? Look at the logo there, and the box logo. Yeah, you know, they must have changed it within within years of starting the company. So we did that one. Another one in my stash, which is first edition, is the Corsair. This was 1973. Um, it's the Kit Series three. Um, they they didn't produce this. Very, the, the last people to produce this kit and the other kit I'm going to show you was Hella. Um, they haven't released this kit. I don't think it was in 2009. I think it was. Um, yeah, I think it was 2000, no, was it 1999? It, they have, you don't see this kit anywhere. Um, like I said, Hella released it, um, as a, as a, as a model set with the paints, their glues and their, and their, uh, brushes. But yeah, you don't, you haven't, I haven't seen this one anywhere for years. Looking on scale, mates, they said the same, you know, there wasn't a lot let's go in here and go back and um, um, let's try that and uh, uh, press the one button then I'll just get it up but it's there's a big video on it so you can watch it and enjoy it um, that one there and I need to type in uh, what was it called again the Corsair Corsair 2 and yeah it, it was it was it was brought out in 20, um, 1973 and it's not seen very much action at all 1 to 72 scale and we're looking at um, Airfix Airfix released this seven times apparently according to this um, there it is that found it yeah, so basically, um, going back through your 1973, it was released, then again in 75, 84, and then Hella released it from 1992 to 1999. So this kit, if you can find it in Hella, or you can find it um, either US Airfix or MPC, um, you'll be doing well. But yeah, the tool, I don't know what's happened to the tooling, um, and I haven't seen that they've they've built another one i'm just looking revel do a reboxed one um and they did a new tool back in 1968 revel did um hazigawa did one in 1967 um but yeah there's very little airfix was 73 so they were one of the last ones to put one out a uh, matchbox put one out um so let me yeah, Matchbox bought one out, but it was the A70 Corsair in 1974. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very, if you can find one, you're doing well. Um, yeah, it's one of them. Hella, look up to the late, latter days if you wanted one, if you wanted to build one. Hazigawa bought out their kit 2008, um, year 2000. I think Revel 
and uh, the, there was a rebox of the Alanga. They've got one. Uh, Italiari have released one, but that came with new decals, and that basically the Italiari one is an Etsy Etsy copy anyway. So yeah, this is the one that I've done today. Um, sorry, sorry about that. I'm just jumping through all the information there of what I see and know. Um, put it on. There you go. Just checking the. Uh, let's move that up a little bit. There you go. Yeah, 1973 kit. Obviously, the uh, the decals have yellowed. Um, I'm going to have to put these in the um, in the in the window when there's a big sunny day to get that one done. There's a little advert in there saying the name of the game, Big Cheese, Spectra, they did board games. And then you've got the catalogue. I love catalogues. I really do love a good catalogue. Instructions for 1973 kit is a little bit better. But what I did laugh at when I, when I did the review on this, and uh, as I said, you'll, you'll see it then this week, was that you've got one, two, three, and then you've got four, which is like a massive amount to do with you know up to 20 parts and then you've got number five which is just putting the canopy on and then bang <laughs> all the air to sea missiles <laughs> and um air to air missiles to go on <laughs> it's just like boom 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 everywhere there's loads of them to go on this kit i didn't realize it had some i i don't think you would need to do all of them to be honest and it comes with um, two scales, uh, two schemes, call-outs. You've got the U.S. Navy version and you've got the USAF version, um, you know, which is it's quite good. There's not a lot going on. It's all down the side on the top here and you've got very little underneath. Um, and it comes up with the colours there, um, the old uh, Humbro colours, or do they call it um, uh, FX colours. But yeah, again, it comes with its stand. You know, I think we should bring back the stand there, fix. Look at all these. You've got loads of these to paint and to fit. You can be better off just spraying the whole lot grey and then putting, um, some, and then just uh, get a Tipex pen and just putting lines down through with the Tipex. There's a, it's, it's a lot of bits there. So that's, I did that one today. Which, which was really interesting because I didn't realise that it's only ever been released. It was only it only had a, a shelf life of 17 years, really. Um, so 2009. So that one's that one. And then I also, the SA330 Puma was also released in um, 1973. Uh, Series 3 kit. Um, and Heller then also, and I think Heller was, uh, released it last. Um, very much... Just go to scale mates again scale mates and where's my history tab gone of course uh, I'm trying to find it now scalemates.com come on in you get I'm trying to get into the thing then we type in the puma puma then airfix one to 72 scale I'm going to go down to Airfix. There you go. Airfix 17. Whoops, I just reveled in by mistake. I want Airfix, not Revel. Yep, there you go. Uh, history of that was, yeah, definitely 1973, 75, 81, 82, released 83 and 86, then released 89. By Hella, but then all Airfix also released it in 90, 1991, 2, and 4, 1994, just as box different box arts. And then the last time it was released was by Hella as a model set, so you get your paints, your glues, and your brushes in 2008. So you don't see this one very much either, but this is original, this is um, first edition, straight out of the box, 1973. Um, it comes, I think, with two schemes. It comes as the Royal Air Force scheme. Uh, look at the back here. It comes as the Royal Air Force version, which has a lot of decals. Then you've got the French version, which only adds like two or three decals that you need. Um, one or maybe a bit, you know. But yeah, there's very little. So you've got there, what number was that? Um, 
doesn't say the numbers does it but buo and those two bits there so basically it's uh that one and that one and them two for the french version then everything else if you're going to do the royal air force and i wouldn't be surprised if you did the air force oh yeah hella also did this kit i did it in the video as well as a un one so it's united nations it's all white it does look pretty good actually but um again you start off with and you don't have to do it apparently but in in the start of the kit you're actually doing the seats and the seats just look so difficult if you see what i mean there's a lot of parts there for the seats because you're doing the frames of the seat you, you know, you're basically doing everything um, with this kit. You know, you, you can you have to put the seats in. They just say cabin seats 17 to 30 are optional and if required, open flashed over holes in cabin floor. So you can just fill in the, the holes in the cabin floor if you don't want these big bench seats at the back. But as soon as you start on that, you put that together, the pilot's in there, and then you start doing like radiator bits and everything. Put your decal in, or they call it the transfer here. Put your prop together, gearing together, and then um, your exhaust on the side of the gearing, and then bang, you then it all goes together in one big one big melt really. Um, the sides, the fuselage, your tail, everything, it all comes mixed together. Put the doors on and everything else, your your your, your, your skids, um, your propeller then on, and then you can then paint it. So yeah, that's another one that I've uh, I've done today and hopefully it will be released this week. Any questions, put them in the chat. Um, I've got 10 minutes to go. It's got to be a bit of a short one tonight because I've got um, things to be sorting out later. Um, and also I just want to do some more editing on some thumbnails. I mean, updating the thumbnails on the channel. Um, but I have been appreciating everyone that has been joining me on these live streams. And if you if you find them getting a bit boring, you know, give me some suggestions. I have spoken or emailed uh, Baggies today and his webcam is on its way. So hopefully then one during the day we should be able to like get ourselves ready, get do like a test feed um, and uh, hopefully see how it works. And I'm hoping to get three or four people. I know Matt from Model Minutes, unfortunately, is actually... Um, on holiday so he's not doing much really model wise he's putting out a few videos that he had pre-recorded um, but I'm hoping that we will be able to um, definitely come together and do like a two hour like live stream and actually us all just building a model together and just having a bit of fun and that you'll be able to watch it um, but I'm enjoying at eight o'clock at night coming on here talking about what I've done in the daytime you know as I do you know I'm, I'm not a model I'm not a professional model builder I'm just an amateur who likes building models. I'm not up to any sort of big standard, but I do feel that I could give something back to the modeling community. That's that's where I'm at with this. Um, also, one other thing I was going to mention tonight was um, Airfix contacted me um, saying, you know, they really enjoy the videos. They've been uh, one of the chap who said spent. It, it might be just. Um, just being nice, but I do generally, I do generally feel that he is enjoying watching these videos. He's been watching me for a while, and he's invited me to his affiliates program with Airfix, um, and he's um, they're going to set up a, a link so that if you wanted to help the channel out, um, you can buy Airfix kits via this link, and the channel will get a percentage. And all I do, this is how I make my money. Um, is um, for this channel and the models and stuff is that I've got them in the stash but um, I buy and sell models um, not I don't make them I just buy them put kit form and then sell them and like repurpose them and stuff to other people they can use them and, um, and any money I do get will be I just getting more more models that I can build um, my stash is quite big anyway so I've got about 400 models up there oh Baggies I was just talking about you sir he's just popped on good evening they're just saying that you've um, got a webcam I've just we've just been um, I've just found him on Facebook so we're gonna have a little chat on Facebook and uh, just see what sort of software we need so we can both do like a live stream while we're both building a model and just have a chat and do stuff but the idea would be is to have like a group of us joining up together and having a chat of the day and see what they've been doing every day you know I I try and do two hours or maybe an hour, two hours of modeling a day in between everything else that I'm doing. Um, you know, doing videos and stuff does take up a lot of time. And, um, and yeah, just talk about the things that we do, special tools that people use that we don't necessarily know that even exist. 
I'm really keen on getting, I've seen a lot of people panel line scribing. I don't have a panel line scribe, but what I tend to do is, is get a bit of um, uh, Dymo tape and stick it around and then and then cut back using the back end of uh or using the scalpel you know just to try and get the the panel line back but i'd like to talk to other people who may use panel scribers and see what else is available out there um but yeah it's all been a bit like heat uh today i've been all over the shop today and i have done bits and pieces so this now is going to go in for its um yeah, gloss varnish so hopefully, if I get the gloss varnished on this and, and the back end and all this chromed up, we might be able to start doing the decals on this tomorrow night. I'm waiting for the paint on this one. I've still got the lightning to um, airbrush, but I really am waiting for the, all the, you know, get two or three models together, then I blitz through and do a, a load of uh, airbrushing. Um, I've got some ideas for um, videos and uh, producing videos but other than that i'm just enjoying the live streams and catching up with everyone during the day and for everyone who wants to talk to me can and ask questions um i think that's really all i've got to really say tonight um airfix website is now working so if you want to go and buy or look up that um spitfire mark 5c that's being released um in autumn you can see all the pictures there I've got really much, nothing much else. I'm still trying to find out what's happening about IPMS and whether the um, <clears throat> model world is uh, going to be um, um, happening. James Moe has just come on saying, cursing the trumpeter Westland whirlwind here. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I have got in the stash that I'm looking at building in, in maybe, maybe a week or two time is this one. <laughs> I've done a review on this one on my channel if you want to have a look at it. Um, it is a frog kit, um, then Nova and now Westland, West, um, Arc Models have now released this. Um, I've got the paint for this one I think somewhere. Um, but this was on, so I'm just going down through my list and when I see models, but yeah, it's... Um, it's not the easiest, but that trumpeter one, is it 1 to 48 scale or 1 to 72, James? You know, this is what I'm doing. But this is what I'm going to put up with, is like stuff like this. Look at the state of that. Look at that, man. This is going to take some build, isn't it? Raised panel lines. Um, I assume you can cut the door off if you want to cut the door out um, and and use it. But yeah, it's, 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 it's not a, a lot of parts in the kit um you know it's it's a very very you know basic kit but it's one that i've had on this on the shelf that i've attempted to build and have a play with and i, I think it only cost me 12 quid plus postage on ebay but yeah i saw it and i thought i've got to have it but yeah look at the state of it man <laughs> look at that gearing Oof. That's going to be a challenge, and the decal. The decals look alright, to be fair. You know, the decals are pretty good. I like to sell up models. A bit of a laugh. You got West. You got Wessex of Australian Navy, and you've got the um, British anti-submarine helicopter. So you've got two skate two scales to play with on this one but yeah it should be a bit loud uh 148 world war ii fighter not the latter helicopter oh i see what you mean i saw westland i thought you meant um helicopter sorry about it, mate i see what you mean now what's it like that kit have you done have you done a video of it done an unboxing that'd be good james if you can do that uh, i thought when, you, when i saw westland there i just assumed it was the um helicopter the Western Whirlwind. Look at that. Well, this is dried up quite nice. It's getting there slowly. So another coat on this. Then I'll do. Then I'll, I'll mask up and do the uh, and do the brown. That one's done. And I think I'm almost done for the evening. Thank you all for watching the show or the live stream. Um, any questions, comments, put them down below. I'm available on email. Go to the about section. And if you want to ask any questions or if you do want to build a model with me live on the stream, please get in, get in touch. 
and we can work something out and and we'll, and I'll say this week hopefully I'll be able to sort out the software on how we can do it successfully everything else is all mustard enjoy your week folks happy modeling and I'll hopefully see you uh, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Cheers.